Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. You're watching News Room. I'm your host, Makhariba. Today is the 2nd of December 2021, and we'll be discussing the following during the course of our show. We will begin with the future of the relationship that exists between Pakistan and Russia in the whole context of the six member delegation that is currently in Moscow for talks on different important issues of mutual interest and also to talk about enhancing the cooperation that exists between the two countries. Now, whether it be uh, the talks between uh, Vladimir Putin and our Prime Minister Imran Khan over the last few months on the telephone or whether it be the military cooperation between the two countries our bonds have only strengthened with time how important is this visit this will be the topic of our discussion in our first segment our second story ladies and gentlemen concerns and pertains to the conflict between Israel and Palestine the head uh, the president of the United Nations General Assembly Abdullah Shahid has said that a lot was at stake as far as the security of the region it was much beyond uh, in the Israeli Palestinian region if the conflict was not resolved this is a conflict that exists since decades many resolutions have been put forward in the United Nations nevertheless no tangible solution has to date come out despite the different pacts that were agreed upon. This is our second story. Then our third story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns South Sudan, where Pakistani engineers have been helping uh, the flood-ravaged people of uh, the region in South Sudan, the unity state. Their lives have been disrupted by this worst flooding that has happened, but the Pakistani engineers are uh, toiling hard and fast and 24-7 in order to bring relief to the people of Unity State. Then, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we will be talking about Havaldar Muhammad Shafiq of the Pakistan Army, who embraced Shahadat while serving in the United Nations mission in the Central uh, African Republic, otherwise known as CAR. His uh, uh, body was uh, brought back to Pakistan and his last rites were performed right here in Mianchannu in Khanewal and he was buried with full honors. This is our last story. Our first story, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin with that and let's talk about uh, uh, the future of the relationship between Pakistan and Russia. Both countries have had uh, ups and downs in the past. Nevertheless, since the last few years, there is uh, this resolve from both countries to further strengthen the bond between the two countries. As the latest gesture, a Pakistani mission of six has also left. It is currently in Moscow and talks are going on between uh, Moed Yusuf Saab, who is the National Security Advisor, with the Secretary of the Security Council of uh, Russia as well. More in the following report. The Pakistan-Russian rapprochement continues to proceed at stunning pace despite complex regional situation. In defense realm, Russian-Pakistani military relations have been gradually improving over the years, driven primarily by shared Afghan emanating terrorists and other non-traditional security threats. In order to further bolster bilateral relations, Pakistani and Russian national security advisors held comprehensive talks in Moscow. According to National Security Division, the agenda was to review whole gamut of bilateral cooperation in the fields of economy, energy, defense, counterterrorism, counter-narcotics, information, and cybersecurity. In order to Russia durable peace in Afghanistan, the two sides resolved to support all efforts to bring lasting peace in Afghanistan and expressed grave concern over the looming humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Earlier, Russia and Pakistan practiced various drills involved in joint counterterrorism operations in two week long exercise, the Druzba the Sixth, which was aimed at learning from mutual experience in the counterterrorism domain. Imran Khan Putin phone call was a watershed moment in Pak Russia relations after the Russian leader called its Pakistani counterpart in late August to discuss the events unfolding in Afghanistan. Moscow has periodically demonstrated that it relies on Pakistan to advance its regional national security interests and regular political dialogue, including that at the summits and high-level interaction, testified this trust. Now, to discuss the whole gamut of relationship between Pakistan and Russia, we've been joined by Dr. Hasnan Javed, who's a leading analyst. Dr. Sab, thank you very much to have joined us. It's always a pleasure to have you on board. How would you categorize the current spate of relationship between our two countries, that is Pakistan and Russia? Right. <clears throat> this is a long-expected uh, visit uh, from Pakistan to Russia. I mean, uh, the meeting with the Nikolai uh, Patrushev uh, with the Muid Yusuf Saab is much awaited, uh, I mean, meeting because it is after the project has been delayed since 2015 and where uh, the pa Pakistan has different aspects of uh, relationship with Russia. 
uh, everybody knows that before the 2015, the, the the relation in economic terms, in uh, in the cyber security terms, in the uh, uh, security terms, in net or, or the conditional conventional, uh, uh, I mean, defense exercises was not that been, uh, I mean, much in uh, awaited exercises. But we know we are very much aware of uh, potential of Russia. So. When the directional shift from uh, America to, uh, I mean, uh, Russia and China, it is much important to be uh, visited more often because uh, here are some very much rational exercises there. Like Pakistan will have 74% shareholding in the gas pipeline project. Again, is the 26, uh, uh, I mean, plus shareholding in the different other projects. There is a flagship program in energy and then there is a, a technological uplift projects and empowerment projects also been uh, considered but uh, somehow what we uh, we are not accepting it is the russia defense potential so let me if you allow me to discuss about the uh, we have had the third round potential. of the joint military consultative meeting as well between the two uh, countries yes. very lately in fact all the way back to september the 30th and in fact, the military cooperation yes. between the two countries is becoming stronger, isn't it, Dr. Saab? Yes, of course. Uh, that's why I, I just wanted to, I mean, uh, uh, make this bullet to the first because uh, uh, the e economy or economic level is obviously well known that we are, uh, I mean, uh, we, we have a bilateral relationship between uh, in, in the economics, we are in agriculture, we are in manufacturing, we are in other things. But most potential area of the Russia, because they knows how to tackle with the cyber attacks, they know how to tackle with the defense potential, uh, they know how to develop the anti-narcotics uh, settlements, because they were the uh, superpower. And now the, the things onslaught in, in the case of Afghanistan, in, uh, in the case of other matters in Pakistan is being plushed by the FATF, IMF and other things. But uh, same as well, the Pakistan is also uh, have uh, the pressure of the cyber attacks. Nobody knows that uh, this is how much important. I mean, everybody is talking about the uh, Karachi. But, but this uh, is, is, isn't uh, this the case that the Russian side, Dr. Saab, is, uh, is uh, saying that we need to talk more on cyber security and drug trafficking. These are two issues that Russia holds quite dear as far as the cooperation or the future of cooperation with Pakistan is concerned. Thank you very much, Omar. This is the very important. This is why I'm, every time I've said this, that the, you are very daring uh, man in that way. That you are always putting up the right questions uh, directly. I'm coming to the RF Alvi Saab, the president of Pakistan, says the professional and solutions were the vital to reduce the risk of cyber attacks. So let me give you the. Uh, uh, I mean, a number of list where the uh, the Chinese says that the, there is a report mentioned. Uh, and uh, uh, and it is also given by the uh, 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 finance minister Shokat Tareen Saab that 71,000 cyber attacks go every month to the board of revenue and the national assembly uh, uh, on average the 71,000 attacks. So <clears throat> moreover, K, K Electric Company uh, managing generation transmission and distribution of the power and Metropolitan was hit by the cyber attacks last year and the ransom was seven million. Again, on the Mizan Bank, 79,189 banks card were put to a sale on the dark web. That, that, that's, called, uh, uh, Omar, that's called the dark web. They put it all the uh, our data, our banking system, uh, and this all being hubbed by the Indian, uh, in, in Indian uh, I mean, cyber route. So the cyber route is India. So this is very much important to discuss here because I cannot miss that part. Uh, because there is a high reservation, the Ministry of Information and Technology uh, and uh, admitted the capacity deficit to meet the growing challenging of the cyber security officers informed in the committee. All right, uh, Dr. Saab, Dr. Saab, there's the, another angle to it. When we come to drug trafficking, you know, and the yes. need to, to enhance cooperation that has been shown by Russia, there is also the fact that uh, it is somehow also directly or indirectly correlated to this current situation in Afghanistan, which both the countries are also very concerned about. How do you see the collaboration or the cooperation between Pakistan and Russia in order to bring about some kind of uh, uh, proper smooth transition 
of uh, economic and humanitarian aid inside the country and some stability inside that country because it is engulfed with a certain crisis. And of course, drug trafficking, uh, there has also a lot of question marks on drug trafficking through Afghanistan. So until and unless we do not bring stability to Afghanistan, there cannot be a stop or curb in drug trafficking, can there? So again, this is very much important. 90% of the uh, Afghanistan economy is dependent on the black economy. Everybody knows that. So after the, uh, the new government formed, uh, still the structure is uh, minus. There is no uh, structure. There is no infrastructure development. There is no economic structure. There is no uh, development the other line. And this still the, uh, the, the security alliances is still not that much in. And the policing is also very much into the low uh, side. So uh, uh, the, the, uh, the narcotics is most important part in that because uh, uh, what we call it the opium economy or the black economy mm. in overall side, for example, there is no taxation, there is no FBR, there is no uh, other things are being associated. But also in the meanwhile, the China, Chinese, Chinese and the China companies are there, uh, Russian companies are there, but they are facing the same problem because the taxation, FBR, uh, tax collection uh, or the financial institute or financial structure is not that much strengthened. So. Russia, Pakistan, plus China, I would recommend, I would suggest uh, uh, through you, because the Omar Khalid Bhatt is the biggest voice in the, uh, in the corridors, because uh, everybody listens to, to you, through you, and uh, uh, in, in our uh, bureaucratic and democratic structures, that we must have to understand that the bilateral cooperation or the trilateral relationship is much important for the narcotics uh, deferment. Why, it's, why it is so? Because the counter-terrorism and the counter-terrorism and narcotics is much involved. We were dependent on the satellite, uh, American satellite. Now we are converted to the Chinese satellite. This is one aspect which is much better in that way. But 90% of OPM is still dependent on dependency of the, 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 the Afghanis. So we must have to counter this as with the uh, uh, immediate effect because if it happens, the Southeast Asian region would be, uh, I mean, the part of the uh, narcotics. Uh, if it happens, of course, the superpower needs this, and uh, superpower wants this application to be, to have another edge to get its military or to get its uh, immediate humanitarian service. Nobody is seeing that the humanitarian service True. is still minus. Nobody because, you know, it's uh, very important uh, that, uh, that Afghanistan becomes stable uh, and the crisis that is uh, engulfing Afghanistan needs to be catered to at the earliest. That is why we are also working uh, to bring about a meeting of extraordinary meeting of the OIC to talk about that. But nevertheless, let's concentrate on Pakistan and Russia. Now, pa Russia and Pakistan both are also part of the extended troika as far as Afghanistan is concerned. What kind of pressure can both the countries collectively put also on the world body in order to bring some kind of peace in Afghanistan? So, uh, see, uh, I mean, first of all, we have to understand that uh, on the humanitarian ground, let them make the organization structure, let them, let them make the governmental structure, let them decide what is the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, let them open the, uh, they have to open the fund or lending agencies, they have to open the humanitarian funds, they have to open the IMF humanitarian funds and other uh, bodies to do that then they have to uh, put up the pressure on the humanitarian ground unless they accept any government. For example, if you uh, get the analysis of the last three to four months, if the, uh, I mean, uh, since the government is going in, uh, into the form. So there is no, I mean, humanitarian crisis by the, this government. For example, there is no rape, uh, I mean, being reported. There is no uh, terrorist attack. There is no other things has been happened. So mm. on these grounds, so this mean, if the people are, uh, I mean, dying by hunger, so that's mean it is the it is the clear case of the UN, and UN is just misleading or uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, d uh, distracting their services to somewhere else. I mean, we are not talking about the Myanmar, we are not talking about other things, but hmm. still uh, happening into the Afghanistan, they must have to let and to the international level. Uh, and, and for that, I mean, the, 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 the cooperation of countries such as Pakistan and Russia is paramount. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about economy as well. We know that there's a gas pipeline project also between Russia and Pakistan from Karachi to Kasur that is worth about $2.5 billion. Uh, dollars. 
uh, this and so many other projects that both the countries are involved with. How important is it for Pakistan also, this economic uh, collaboration or cooperation with Russia? This is very much important question. Uh, yes, a, a latest stat, because whenever I wanted to talk to you, I need to have, uh, I mean, all new updated uh, stats for you. Well, we are uh, uh, talking to Dr. Hasnan and we are uh, talking about the collaboration and cooperation that exists between Russia and Pakistan in different spheres. We know that there is a delegation of six that is being led uh, by the NSA, that the National Security Advisor, Do uh, Dr. Moeed Yusuf, and he has had talks with his Russian counterpart as well on various important matters, uh, which include cybersecurity, which include economy, energy, defense, counterterrorism, counter narcotics, information. And of course, there is a, there is a, a uh, desire from the Russian side to increase cooperation in cybersecurity and uh, the drug control, that is narcotics control. We, uh, of course, expect a lot of uh, good things to come out of that cooperation. We'll uh, return with our second segment, but after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, Abdullah Shahid, who is uh, the president of the United Nations General Assembly, has said that there is more at stake in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict than just peace and security in the Middle East. He was, of course, referring to this decades-old conflict that exists between Israel and Palestine that sees no respite, that sees no end in sight. More in the following report. The harrowing episode of Israeli's settler colonial design in occupied Palestine continues to wreak havoc upon innocent Palestinian civilians. As Israel persists in trampling upon fundamental human rights in besieged region with impunity, the silence and unquestionable conscience of international community unraveled their double standards. The senseless cycle of bloodshed, destruction and immense suffering of Palestinians moved United Nations to warn that there is more at stake in Israeli-Palestinian equation instead of just peace and security of the region. The United Nations General Assembly President Abdullah Shah had emphasized that credibility of institution, its founding vision and international community's resolve to uphold that agenda is at stake given lack of progress on Palestinian question. Days after 74th anniversary of Resolution 181, United Nations General Assembly President reiterated that a two-state solution is the only way forward to resolve this issue. It's cogent to mention here that on the 29th of November 1947, UN General Assembly adopted Resolution 181 to partition Palestine between Arabs and Jews. Although Jews formed at the time 33% of the total population and owned only 7% of the land, the resolution gave them a state of 56.5% of the total area of historical Palestine. 74 years on, Palestinians remain stateless as the imperial Jewish state continues to occupy Palestinian land, expands its settlement and deprives Palestinians of their fundamental rights. Over the years, Israeli settler violence has become more vicious in its bid to expel Palestinians from their native land. An Israeli rights group, Bet Salem, stated that it documented a total of 451 settler attacks on Palestinians in the West Bank since early last year. Now to discuss more about this conflict that has been there since decades, what needs to be done by the international community in order to find some kind of a solution to this, we've been joined by Ahmed Zaki, he's a Middle East expert. Thank you very much, Ahmed, to have joined us. Ahmed, the reservation that has been shown by Abdullah Shahid, how much do you agree with that, there, that there's much more at stake than peace as far as this conflict is concerned? And uh, Definitely, <coughs> since the creation of the United Nations, it was the primary, uh, it was the primary and sole purpose that it should have to maintain peace and security on the global. Like, the UN creation was that, that was the primary. The, mm. the rest of the department is came later on mm. f for uh, to facilitate mm. that the primary goal should have to be reached. Unfortunately, since the last 74 years, uh, this crisis was going on. Uh, it was the last <coughs> uh, Article 181, mm. uh, 74th year anniversary 
they were they were res this resolution have been celebrated mm. for that and still that resolution it's not been implemented mm. the resolution why is that why uh, has this uh, resolution not been implemented despite uh, more than seven decades having passed the the major issue was that that the security council itself the implementing part of the of the un resolution is is not agree on these points altogether. Mm. Even though the general uh, UN General Assembly agreed, but the Security Council veto powers of the of, of the five members are not willing mm. to implement this because there is a lot of in stake on the side of the Israel and on the side of Palestine. Mm. Not but only well, who who has more stakes uh, if in case there is peace uh, between the two countries, who stands to gain more? The question is that it is the zero-sum game. Mm. Palestinians are not willing Israel to exist in the Middle East, mm. and Israel is just not willing Palestinians to exist in the Middle East. Mm. So both of them want to dominate each other. Mm. The middle ground which the United Nations bring into the table, that was from the General Assembly, and the Security Council is always linear towards the Israeli uh, perspective. Mm. They are saying Israel is the only Middle East uh, democratic country, and following the, the 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 rule of law but when it came to the international law they are the worst mm. in international law of course because they are the one who are bumping the, mm. the children mm. in in, mm. in gaza uh, in area area welfare and not only that the problem now it it become like a showcase weapon showcase the palestinians become like we have uh, like other campaigns targets. like we, ha we have targets, targets like mm. so when you produce new weapons mm. Palestinian is the suitable place that you should have to check this weapon's uh, uh, effect. Does the world not see all of that? I mean, they a two-state solution that was had, had been uh, decided upon since so many years has still not been implemented. But at least look at the humanitarian angle of it all. Look at the way they are dehumanizing the Palestinians. Why is that happening? And why is that happening without any kind of a reaction from the so-called humanitarian agencies and countries? In humanitarian agencies, they have limited authority mm. when it came to the state sovereignty. For example, they have suggestions. They have requests from mm. the uh, powerful states to implement this this mm. target. Mm. If they did not follow that, the, the major problem comes like that. Who is going to implement it? Mm. Take, mm. for example, we want to put by court in Israeli uh, export products mm. from Palestinian land occupied mm. by Israelis. If we put uh, sanctions on that, European market mm. uh, is the target for, for the Israeli uh, market. So they are not going to stop that. Mm. America is the, f is the largest market for Israeli mm. product. Mm. They are not going to stop that. And the rest of the Muslim world have no connection with the Israel. Mm. Even if they have one or two, they have no business relations with them. Mm. It's very little. All right. So when it came to, to the st uh, what's in the stake in, in Israel, mm. the Palestinian and Palestinians and Israelis if they sit together on the table, discuss the matter in a matter of humanitarian issue by themselves. But haven't they discussed that in the past as well? Haven't there been more, a lot of meetings without any proper conclusion? The, uh, the major problem that they cannot implement their agreements is that both sides are supported by the extremist civilian uh, 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 population. Mm. Palest Palestinians are not going to compromise a bench of their land. Mm. And Israel but aren't they right? Isn't that the land of the Palestinians? I, if you if you call it the land of Palestinian, which means Israelis are not exist on the on the ground, mm. which means that whole the land of Israel mm. will be completely become a Palestinian. Mm. Uh, no, but uh, the, I mean, the, the, the let's come back to the two-state solution. I mean, this is what had been agreed between the two, uh, hadn't it? And now, 74 years passed since Resolution 181, pre-1967 uh, borders that had been decided that the, there will be two states based on the pre-1967 borders. Why can't this be implemented in 2021? We are at the end of this year. The w they cannot be implemented because the Security Council feet of our members are not honest on this case. All right. They are not willing to put a, a piece of pressure into Israel. Mm. But they are willing that the Palestinian people should have to suffer for hunger, mm. lack of sanitation, lack of medicine, mm. and die on hunger. Mm. It's more easier for them to put a Palestinian, to, to put any pressure on Israel. And mm. this is well known. Everybody knows it's, it's, it's not a secret. 
The question is that, what is the step that UN can take it? Mm. UN tried But I mean, the fact that remains that in the United Nations, so many resolutions have been passed on Palestine. Nevertheless, none have really taken shape in form of any action. Because Palestini Palestinian case is, they are two brothers, mm. actually, who are living the same, having two different religions. Mm. Their ethnicity is same. Mm. Well, almost their culture is same. The only difference that they have is separated by the religion. All right. So when you try to solve this case on the basis of a political uh, or geographical location, mm. it's going to hurt everyone, mm. not only Palestinians, but Israel. Then what do you feel is, is, is going to uh, if we are going to implement forward. if we are going to implement it, mm. the United Nations Security Council should have to be the first one who's going to implement this resolution. Mm. Israel should have to be put on an accountability and Palestinian mm. people who are suffering five million Palestinian refugees are not able to go back to their land. Mm. That people should have to get back their land. And even Palestinians are being evicted from their houses as we speak. We know of so they many people They are destroying their houses. Mm. They are occupying their lands. They are mm. spreading their settlements. Not only that, they are not allowing even the humanitarian assistance to reach, mm. besiege uh, Gaza. Mm. This, is, this is open for all the world. But nobody can say no and nobody can challenge it. Mm. Till now, even including the United Muslim countries mm. and Arab countries, if they all put their pressure they cannot do anything because mm. it is the Security Council who is helping Israel. Mm. It's France mm. and it is uh, uh, Britain and it's UK and they are openly and USA, they are openly supporting them. All right. But uh, we've seen time and again, you know, different pressure tactics by the United Kingdom as well and uh, by other countries as well. Uh, nevertheless, when we have an institution like the United Nations, as, as you said, the Security Council is uh, uh, being, uh, is, has a very uh, strong tilt towards uh, Israel, then what about the other organizations that are present here? There is uh, the ASEAN, there is uh, uh, the uh, uh, is Shanghai Cooperation Organization, there are small organizations, there is, is the OIC, there is the Arab League. Those countries can also, uh, all these organizations, can't they just get together as one and kind of find some solution to they it? They can get a solution, and, but the prob problem of the solution is that if you are not going to take an action hmm. with your solution, suggested solution hmm. cannot solve anything. As, as, as the President Shahid said, hmm. telling that the Palestinians are not going to fill hmm. their stomach Mm. for the words of, uh, of, the, of the condemnation mm. that UN says or the premises that is not going to be fulfilled mm. because they, they have no houses, they have no sanitation, they have no medicine, they mm. have no schools, even they are not access to the clean water. Mm. The humanitarian crisis going on there, it is it's humanitarian crisis made by people, mm. made by man. If it's made by man, can, it can be stopped by man as well. But it can be stopped by man. Mm. The, the, the first step, if, if the Arab League have a foreign policy, mm. united foreign policy as an Arab League towards the, towards the Palestinian, it, c it could be resolved a lot. Mm. If the United Muslim countries, if the uh, Organization of Muslim Union, if mm. they have a united foreign policy, or if they have even a vision of foreign mm. policy, mm. they could have uh, help mm. a Palestinian. Mm. The problem is that Arab League have, Arab League have no united policy. Mm. Muslim countries have no united policy, and mm. that's no secret. Mm. When it came to the ASEAN, as you mentioned, Shanghai High Cooperation, mm. they are trying to resolve the problem mm. into economic way. Mm. And in order to supply the economic material into Gaza or into Palestinian territory, you should have to get permission from Israel, mm. not from the United Nations, mm. and not from Arab countries, and mm. not from the Muslim you know, world, but to not even from to Palestinian yes. uh, mm. Mm. At authority, mm. you should have to get the permission from Israel, Israeli authority. That I totally agree with you, but we, it is high time really, Ahmed Zaki, to be very frank, mm. that some kind of a solution, if not anything else, then resolution 181 needs to be implemented in letter and spirit, so that the two-state solution that was agreed upon since decades can be put into action, and then from there they can go forward and find uh, some way forward to move together and work together. That the best, the best solution is that if the America is going to push that mm. uh, American administration if they are going to push this resolution back mm. and openly mm. without hesitation that the Israel will will mine it or mm. will Israel will, mm. will, will not agree it if they go forward the rest of the world will follow
Inshallah, let's hope that uh, this happens. We will look forward to that. Thank you very much, Ahmed Zaki, to have joined us and to have talked to us about that. I will end with this uh, quote by Abdullah Shahid, President of the United Nations General Assembly. He said, as long as the Palestinian people are deprived of statehood, as long as illegal settlements continue to be built on land that Palestinians are justly entitled to, as long as Palestinian families are forced to flee the violence and injustices against them and they cannot return home, anger and bitterness will fester. This will contribute to a cycle of violence that has gone on for for far, far too long time to end it. Our next story, ladies and gentlemen, pertains to South Sudan, uh, the unity state, in fact, where there have been rapid floods. And in this whole flooding, what has happened also is that uh, there is a huge contribution from the Pakistani engineers to help those in need. Therefore, the people of South Sudan are extremely grateful to these Pakistani military engineers that have been helping these flood hit people in Unity State in South Sudan and of course uh, in, in different forms and uh, uh, resources uh, and uh, the, whether it be through pumping water out on both sides of the road, whether it's securing and rebuilding the dikes to secure access to the town and airport or to try to prevent further damage to nearby homes. This is what our military engineers are doing in order to bring some respite, some uh, a sigh of relief to the people of uh, South Sudan who are under a lot of stress because of these ravaging floods that have crept on them. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, our last story of the day is the work that our people are undergoing as far as uh, United Nations peacekeeping is concerned. Pakistani soldier was martyred in the United Nations Mission Service in Central African Republic. Havaldar Mohammed Shafiq of the Pakistan Army embraced Shahadat uh, while serving in the United Nations Mission in the CAR. He was brought back uh, to Pakistan and he was given full military honors uh, while, uh, of course, his last rites were performed. Uh, there have been several incidents as far as Pakistani pe peacekeepers uh, are concerned. 162 Pakistani peacekeepers have lost their lives. In September last Naik Adil Jan had embraced martyrdom while on a peacekeeping mission in Sudan. In February, Lance Naik Tahir Ikram had also died in Sudan while his truck had an accident in the South Darfur region. These are people who are uh, working day and night if, uh, while being part of the United Nations in order to bring peace in different regions uh, of the world. And we thank you and we salute you for that. With that, we come to an end of today's news. And we'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow with new stories and segments that pertain to us and you. Get yourselves vaccinated. And those who are eligible for the booster doses, kindly go to do so and have them before it's a bit too late in the day. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.